Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to my weekly update. It's been quite a week. Many of you will have heard uh, the situation with the Australian-UK trade agreement. Uh, very broad principles announced this week between Scott Morrison and our Prime Minister Boris Johnson. I've had meetings with Secretary of State Liz Truss and the farming unions uh, join me from Scotland, Northern Ireland and John Davis in Wales joined me for a meeting with Minister Greg Hands, who opened up the meeting by saying, well, this is a, a great deal uh, for the UK. Uh, we're very excited about the opportunities. Uh, he was sure that we would agree with him. And I have to say, I opened up my opening remarks by saying, Minister, I want it put on record. I think this is the most shocking deal. Um, I do see it as, as just completely opening up our market. I, I really cannot understand when you are in ownership of the most prized food market in the world, why you would give so much away in your first deal is, is absolutely beyond me. The figures are stark. You know, we open up with 35,000 tonnes of, of beef, 25,000 tonnes of lamb and sugar, again, which was very much in the sensitive sector bracket. We give effectively away the whole of the ATQ over an eight year period. So it, it's it's extraordinary times and, and I guess really how I have left it with government is you know we absolutely have to have these agricultural councillors we absolutely have to have a multi-million pound uh, investment into partnership working true and meaningful with the agricultural sector because we are going to have much more raw ingredients coming onto our marketplace Therefore, we've really got to make sure that exports work for us. That doesn't mean taking our eye off the ball with the home market. Really have to focus on procurement, on driving the same practice of British sourcing that has been achieved in retail into the other 50% of the value of the food market of out of home. So really working on those buy British, buy seasonal, buy local messages is key. But exports have become absolutely critical. And the fact that we are still having to, to ask for this, this was the other point that I made to Liz Truss and Greg Hands, you know, why, oh why, I said, do I have to fight so hard? Why do I have to be out in the media? Why do we have to be campaigning? These things are just for the common good. You know, the Trade Agricultural Commission uh, is, is hailed to be a, a great success that will, of course, have oversight and scrutiny and write a report on the Australian trade deal. But these are things that should be a given. So I'll, I'll keep you updated. Um, but trade is progressing at pace. So later on in the week, uh, I met with Minister O'Connor from New Zealand, who was over here to kick off again discussions, which are now in third round, um, hoping to conclude a trade deal with New Zealand and the UK in the autumn. It's fair to say, I think New Zealand pretty surprised uh, by what has happened, fairly disappointed uh, not to be able to work more closely, they said, with the UK on what they saw as really good welfare opportunities that would be focused on at the WTO to make the changes. They also see the UK government as handing over one hell of a lot to the Australians. So it remains a, a very, a very, very live issue. And of course, you know, there's Canada, Mexico, the US to come. And we have to resolve the situation with Europe, our closest trading partner. We have real difficult issues there that add cost. Exports are down and we need it resolved. It's in the economic interests of both sides that a pragmatic approach is found. And we did a, a live event, Nick von Westenholz and I, um, some of you will have, have listened to it in the week discussing the Australian trade deal and the impact, what it means for us. And I made the point on that live event, you know, the day job for you is, is just as important as it is for me. We've had a horrendous time with the situation with bovine TB being ever more politicised. Our team of staff in Stonely and in the regions as focused on the nuts and bolts of our industry as they ever are. But I guess, you know, the defining message to, to get over to you is is speaking with one voice. You know, the, the power of the NFU to be able to speak with one voice across all land areas, across all sectors, the coalition of, of farming organisations. Um, I've got a call booked in again with the Jamie Oliver team you know, to hold that coalition together of chefs, of consumers, of environmentalists and farmers is really important because working with a majority government 
you have to have that that coalition voice, that united voice. It is really hard graft trying to shift them sometimes, especially when I know that as farmers, we have the very solutions that they need. Anyway, I will pause there and just wish you well. Please, as ever, stay safe, look after yourselves. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Many thanks.